Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, how to quickly determine the ability of your opponents. It's one of my favorite challenges in pickleball. Let's say you go down to your local pickleball court, you meet up with your partner, and you join two players who you have never played against before. You have a very short window of opportunity to figure out their strengths and their weaknesses. You've got to figure it out quickly so you can attack their weaknesses and avoid their strengths. So here's a video of some players I have never seen play. The video does not mention their skill level, so I'm going to try to figure it out. So I'm going to point out what I see as the game goes on and I'm going to rate them throughout the game. Now my initial assessment may be incorrect. Maybe they start out playing really well and they fall apart as the game goes on, or maybe they start out playing poorly and they get better as the game goes on. But usually I can tell within about four points how good or how bad the players are. So take a look and leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what level you think these players are at. Thanks to the YouTube channel Dave Brunacci for posting this video. Let's go. Before the first serve is made, I take a look at what the players are wearing and what kind of paddle they are using. As you can see, the player here in the near court, he is using a Selkirk paddle and he is also wearing a Selkirk shirt. So just looking at him, I would think he's a decent player, even though it doesn't seem he has one of the most updated Selkirk paddles. The guy with the backwards cap on, who is his partner, I'm not familiar with the paddle that he has. Doesn't look familiar to me. The guy in the back serving is playing with an engaged paddle, which is a good paddle. And his partner is playing with a paddle that I think has a smiley face on it. So that's not good. I've never seen a paddle with a smiley face. So it might be a $50 paddle. Who knows? Let's see what happens. So far, so good. All right, so there's a hint right there about the player in Black's ability. The team was dinking back and forth, doing a very good job. The guy in Black became impatient. He tried to speed up a ball that was not high enough, and he hit it right into the net. So that tells me 3.0. A 3.5 player, a 4.5 player, a 4.0 player is simply going to be more patient and wait for a better opportunity. Okay, I can stop right here and just look at that third shot. This is a horrible third shot hit right into his opponent's wheelhouse. Players that do this and do not attempt a third shot drive or a third shot drop are 3.0 players. So the guy in Selkirk, at this point, by one shot, 3.0 player. Okay, he just pops it up again, does not try again a reset into the kitchen or a drive, 3.0. And of course, the ball is put right away because of the Selkirk player's inability to hit a third shot drop or a third shot drive. Here we go. Okay, guy in the backwards cap, what does that tell me? He missed that third shot drop by about four feet as it hit into the bottom of the net, 3.0. Not even close to hitting a successful third shot drop, even though he knows to attempt one. Okay, the player with the white cap on in the back attempted a third shot drive, hit it a foot and a half below the net or the top of the net, so 3.0. Cannot get a very simple serve back into the court, 3.0. Let's watch the return. Okay, that's a 3.0 return. It's barely over the non-volley zone. What this probably means is his opponent is going to hit this ball before the Selkirk guy can get established at the non-volley zone because his return was not deep enough. There we go. He's still running. His feet were not set. 
and he could not get the ball back over the net. 3.0. Okay, that really wasn't that bad, except for the guy in the Selkirk shirt. Hit a ball that was hit out of the court for the unforced error. But there is something that did happen here that I'm always looking out for. Because when I see it, I know the player's backhand is inadequate. And let me show you what that is. You probably didn't catch it, but there it is right there. The guy in the white cap is a left-handed player. He switched hands, and he hit this shot with his right hand. So if I'm playing against him, I am going to hit to his backhand as often as I possibly can because he cannot hit a backhanded shot. He has got to switch hands. At least he did it on that shot. So I'm going to hit it to his backhand as hard as I can. It will give him very little time to switch hands. And if he tries to switch hands, there's no way he's going to get the ball back. Let me point out a couple of things so far. The Selkirk guy, he has dressed the part but he is not as good as I thought he might be. And another thing is the players in the far court who are serving, they are stacking. Just because a team stacks does not make them a 3.5 or 4.0 or 4.5 player. It doesn't mean anything unless they have the ability to execute on the court. Let's see what the guy in black does with the third shot. Third shot drive right to his opponent's put-away zone. And the guy in the backwards cap hits the ball, I think, off the edge of his paddle. Just almost totally missed it. 3.0 play. Let's see if he does better. That's a pretty good shot right there. That's not. Come on, Selkirk guy. Let's see some 3.5 play. That was a good shot. That was an excellent shot, but look at what he did not do. That was his best shot of the game, a very good third shot drop, but he does not take advantage of it. He freezes in the transition zone. At this point, he should be at the non-volley zone. Just a total wasted opportunity. Now, if the guy with the white cap on has any sense, he is going to hit it at the Selkirk player's feet. If he hits it to the guy with the backwards cap on, that's a 3.0 move if I've ever seen one. And there you have it. And the ball is put away. Total fail by the guy in the white cap. You've got to understand where your opponents are positioned on the court and take advantage of their weaknesses. The Selkirk player's weaknesses weakness was he did move forward after hitting a perfect third shot drop. He froze in the transition zone and the player in the white cap did not even see it. You've got to recognize when your, play, when your opponents are not positioned correctly on the court. It's as simple as that. All right, let's see some 3.5 play. I know they have it in them. Maybe I can bump them up. Almost. There's a 3.5 shot right there. The guy in the backwards cap able to reset the ball into the kitchen with the fifth shot. Now both players are at the non-volley zone. So very good job. They're going to dink here. Oh, they're going to try to dink, but instead the Selkirk guy should have let that ball bounce. He did not. He popped it straight up until it, into his opponent's put-away zone, and this guy is just going to crush him. Instead, he hits it out of the court. So two 3.0 plays and one 3.5 play. Just can't get the backhand. So at this point in the game, after watching it for three minutes, these players are all 3.0 players. If I'm playing against them, here's what I know. Let's start with the third shot. They're not going to hit a third shot drop, or if they attempt to, they're not going to be successful. They're more than likely going to hit a third shot drive, so I'm going to be stationed at the non-volley zone just waiting for it. Secondly, if they do not move forward, and get stuck in the transition zone, I'm hitting it right at their feet. Here we go. There's that third shot I'm telling you about. Just 2.5 play. You just cannot hit a third shot like this and expect to win a pickleball game. But look what the issue is. 
Look where the, the guy with the white cap is. He is all the way over in his partner's half of the court. They're probably going to click paddles right here. This is obviously the player in black's ball, but the player with the white cap on is just in his space, and he doesn't need to be. But he got it. He got away with it. I think they got kind of lucky right there. Now, this is kind of a different situation because the player in the white cap is left-handed. So that was actually to both of the player's forehands. It was the guy in black's ball, but maybe the player with the uh, white cap on thinks he's better than his partner and decided he needed to take that ball. And it worked out for him, so good for him. Almost. Good job getting it into the kitchen on the fifth shot. Okay, there's another instance where the guy in the white cap decided to speed things up and try to hit a drive when the ball was not high enough. There's a 3.0 move here. This player puts a lot of slice spin on the ball, and what happens is the Selkirk player does not know how to adjust to the slice spin. He just did not set his feet very well. He was backing up when he hit it. He did not bend his knees to go and get that ball. So very poor form on trying to hit that slice spin return. So what do you think? Am I being too critical? Are they playing better than I actually think they are? Uh, no, that serve was hit out of the court. That was a really nice job by the Selkirk guy. So look what happens here. Here comes the third shot drive. He's able to get it back. Very nice job defending. Here comes the fifth shot. It's put up just a little bit too high. Look at the angle at which he hits this ball right to the player in back Black's backhand. And he just can't get to it. Very nice job by the Selkirk player. That's a very nice third shot drop into the kitchen. That's a 3.5, 4.0 level play. Let's see if they can follow through with it. They cannot, and the reason they cannot is because the Selkirk guy, again, did not recognize how good his partner's third shot was, and he did not get to the non-volley zone in time. He could not get to the ball. If he would have recognized it and he would have moved quicker, he could have taken this fourth shot right here out of the air. That's 3.0 play all day long, but a 4.0 play by the guy in the backwards cap. Great shot. Very nice third shot drop. All right, let's talk about the stacking one more time. Obviously, the player in the white cap is left-handed, so that's why the team is stacking. Here comes the third shot. Oh, he tried. Look, he tried to hit it where he was supposed to, to the player in the backwards cap's backhand. He just happened to miss it, but at least he tried, and he was able to do it that time. Oh, look at that. Did a little Ernie there. We got the point. Nice job. That's a that's a 4.0 move. Let me say this about the players. I think they all have equal skills. There's not like there's one player who is worse than all the other three or one player who is better than all of the other players. I think they are equally matched. There is a 3.0 move that I just see all of the time. If you're moving forward when you swing, a lot of the times the ball is going to be hit into the middle of the net. The reason your feet are not set. And that's exactly what this player did. Let's watch it one more time. You can see he's moving forward, boom, right into the net. 3.0, 100%. So at this point, if I'm the team in the far court, I'm returning the ball to the Selkirk guy every time because he has pretty much shown he cannot hit a successful third shot drop. And if he does, he doesn't move forward. This is the best point of the match so far. So the ball hit the top of the tape. I think it rolled in, and it did roll in because the guy in the backwards cap is serving again. So 
The best point of the match. Really nice play. Well, he tried to reset it. Just can't do it. Good job. So you can tell this is 3.0 play because the rallies are not lasting very long. Only on a couple of occasions have the players all been at the non-volley zone at the same time, dinking back and forth. It's just kind of hit it hard as you can, just like that, and get the point over with. Not a lot of strategy. Just bang, bang, pickleball at the 3.0 level. Again, if you don't agree with me, please let me know. What are you seeing that I'm not seeing? That was a great shot. That ball was out. Very nice job by the guy in the Selkirk shirt. He should be smiling. That was a really good shot. Good job. Perfect. I don't understand why he doesn't try that more often. He got that third shot in, and the guy in the white cap could not get it back. Nope. Nope. And it did not go over the net. Why? Because watch what happens when he hits it. Is he stationary or is he moving forward? He's moving forward when he hits that ball. You've got to set your feet. A couple of more exchanges and I'll be done. Here comes another third shot opportunity. Almost. Nope. Fifth shot reset. Nope. Seventh shot reset. Nope. Point over. That's 3.0 play. He just could not do it. Had three chances and could not advance forward. Wow. Great hands by all the players. Nice job. That's more like 3.5, 4.0. This is the last shot we'll take a look at. Yeah, again, his feet are just not set. He's moving forward. That is such a 3.0 mistake. If you're making that mistake, stop making it. So there you have it. My opinion of these players' ability. They started off playing like 3.0 players. They did make some 3.5 and 4.0 plays, but overall not good enough to rate them any higher than 3.0. I hope you understand how I came to my conclusion that these are 3.0 players, and I'd like to know if you agree with me or not. Am I right or am I wrong? Please let me know what you think in the comments section below. That's it from Pick a Ball, Pick Apart. I really hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching and see you on the court.